Okay, so there's a number of public tools. Okay, so there's a number of public tools that we use in our project. Um, the first we use is on uh, uh, on-screen table. We use um, on-screen table to collect um, information of uh, the main st uh, structural components of uh, the building, such as dimensional walls, uh, foundation footings, floors, roofs, and associated uh, envelope windows and doors. So after that, we input uh, building information into uh, a chosen um, life cycle uh, assessment tool, which is Athena Impact Estimator. Um, the Athena Impact Estimator generates a view of materials and uh, refer it to uh, Athena Lifecycle Inventory Database. <coughs> and the Lifecycle Inventory Database is a source of information which um, uh, collects information re uh, uh, regarding uh, the transportation modes, um, uh, extra basic materials, and uh, energy profile. The information is supported by um, LCI uh, study. So um, with fewer materials, um, the life cycle inventory uh, database refers um, the life cycle data back to uh, an impact estimator and generate a uh, LCA profile. And the profile was characterized by a tracy program, which is known as tool for reduction and assessment of chemical and uh, other, other environmental impacts. So what it does is that uh, the tracy characterized uh, chemical emissions to uh, sales uh, carbon dioxide equivalent and other uh, impact categories such as global potential, uh, global warming potential, ozone depletion potential, smog potential, etc. So with the characterization factors um, from Tracy, I think the impact estimator generates a series of results such as new materials, uh, life cycle inventory profile, uh, life cycle uh, inventory, uh, inventory impact assessment profile. So let's look at an example of, the, uh, of our model. So uh, here's a um, sample SPU, uh, SPU uh, drawing for hazard building, which is obtained from UBC campus and community planning department. Um, we upload these drawings to on-screen takeoff. And uh, as a plan view, and we perform a quality takeoff on the drawing. Um, as our main focus for our project is the main structural components of the building, uh, which is uh, walls, foundation footings, roofs, floors, uh, columns, and envelope of the building, uh, windows and doors. Uh, so here is an example um, of the footings, which is measured and labeled uh, by the count condition in the, in the software. So here's another example of the walls, which a measure and label uh, with a linear condition uh, in the software. And then here again, there are the uh, columns in the buildings which are uh, measured in a similar way to the building. However, when we are doing the um, quality takeoff, we have several limitations and challenges. And one of the major limitations is that we have several uh, joint clarity issues. And then the other one is um, so some of the material specification information uh, is out of the range of impact estimate. So as a result, we have, we have to go to the site, we do site visit, and then we have to research uh, for assumptions. It's very important for us to make assumptions uh, transparent and then ready for reproductibility of the test site results. So we um, summarize all the assumptions into uh, uh, documents and so that anyone who uses documents um, to uh, so that they can regenerate the results or recreate models. So these documents uh, include uh, integrated measurements, um, assumptions that are made to uh, complete the models, um, and uh, um, uh, set basic information which are com converted to impact estimator requirements. So here is an example of the uh, uh, drawing clarity issues that we have uh, for last period. Uh, as you can see, yeah, it's not clear whether to change the contrast, whether to extra zoom in uh, to examine the building information. I also had to go to the, uh, the building and observe and compare the, what's the actual building information with the, the joint information. And sometimes we also had to go to the uh, website uh, to get articles uh, for additional information. So here's an example of the um, impact estimator assumption for hazard building. 
as you can see, the flash content here is uh, 50%. Uh, however, in the impact estimator, we have um, flash average, which is assumed to be 9%, 25%, and uh, 35%. So, uh, in this case, uh, okay, in this case, we assume it's uh, average. Okay, so here is another example showing the, the concrete uh, strength, which is uh, 25 megawatt for, uh, for 56 days. The research shows, shows that the concrete strength reach uh, more than 90% after 56 days, and it continues strengthening up, up to 125% at times plus five. So in this case, we we'll assume uh, the concrete strength should be uh, 30 megawatt. So um, after this assumption input into the uh, impact estimator, um, we generate what we refer it to uh, in Athena life cycle inventory database and create an LCI profile and was character characterized by a tree C and then eventually we have uh, results of impact assessment. So next I'll pass to Mike to uh, tell us about the results of the impact assessment. Thanks, John. So as John mentioned, um, our life cycle assessment um, quantifies environmental impacts in terms of eight summary categories. Um, they're shown up here. Um, as you see, some of these uh, summary categories are very regional, so an example of that would be eutrophication potential. Um, some of them are global, um, for example, ozone depletion. Um, these, we used uh, midpoint impacts, um, which are just a, a, quanti a quantity of material. Um, for example, a global warming potential you would use um, a CO2 um, equivalent, and, um, and what that would cause, what the endpoint impact would be, um, would be the degrees that the Earth warms. Um, so we're going to talk about each of those endpoint impacts um, separately. So as I just mentioned, global warming potential is measured in kilograms of CO2 equivalent. So all the emissions during the production of the building um, are quantified and characterized in this way. Um, but what does this mean for Vancouver? Um, Big Tom Architects ended up uh, doing a study where they looked at what a sea level rise associated with global warming would mean for the coast on Vancouver. On the left, you see a two meter rise in sea level, and this ends up with uh, some loss of shoreline in uh, South Vancouver. What was interesting, though, is on the right, you see a seven meter rise in sea level, and uh, this actually ends with um, downtown Vancouver becoming an island. Um, of course, the International Panel on Climate Change is a little bit more um, hesitant in their estimate, and they put it at 0.6 meters over the next 100 years. So maybe we won't see an island. Um, but what we could see is um, more heat waves like we saw last summer. Uh, this could be associated with global warming. Um, and if that were the case, uh, it would be much more common. And I think we would all have to buy air conditioners. Um, aquatic eutrophication, a lot of people might not know what that is. Basically, it's when you add nutrients to uh, bodies of water. It sounds like a great thing, but unfortunately, it causes algae to grow. Um, this is a picture of Lost Lagoon in Stanley Park. It was taken last summer. Um, this beautiful algae bloom is actually uh, horrible for the fish that are living in that lagoon. Um, so it can kill fish and shellfish. Um, you would not want to swim in this uh, lagoon here, or any lake that might be uh, eutrophied. Um, and also, it can be toxic to humans, and it can be toxic to livestock that are using this water. Um, it, all in all, it reduces the biodiversity of the ecosystem. Uh, acidification, uh, basically just acid rain. Um, they, the LCA uh, quantifies um, all the emissions into the atmosphere and uh, characterizes it in terms of how many moles of um, H plus ion they can produce. Uh, this is a very regional impact um, and one that Vancouver is very sensitive to. Um, here's an example of what uh, acidification can do to forests. Uh, I can strip the, uh, the greenery, greenery away. Um, here is acidification um, on concrete. It ends up uh, dissolving some of the uh, calcium hydroxide, um, and you can lose some of the, the concrete mass. Um, also, it can kill fish and wildlife. Um, here's an example from Harrison Lake. Um, that fish may or may not have died due to um, acidification in the lake. 